Hello, and welcome to Your Mind, Your Reality, Your Results, a weekly show where I meet with experts in a variety of fields around mindset, so you can change your mindset and ultimately get the amazing results you want. I'm so glad today to be joined by Mark Frentz. Uh, welcome to the show, Mark. Thank you so much, Leah. It's, it's a real pleasure to just spend more time with you at all. <laughs> well, we certainly have had amazing conversations, and I can't wait for people mm -hmm. to get to hear what you're going to share today, because I think it's going to be very useful, especially to all the entrepreneurs out there. Um, if you haven't met me, by the way, my name is Leah Fink. I'm the owner and founder of All Thrive, and we run uh, amazing, engaging workshops focused on personal development and mental wellness, which I'm always happy to chat about. But really, we have a very interesting topic for today, and I would encourage people, because we have an expert here, uh, feel free to put comments and questions in the chat there in the comment box, and we can address them. And even if you're watching this after the show, it's no longer live, feel free to put those in as well, because we can get back to you and answer any of those if you'd like. So to start with, Mark, because uh, you're new to the show, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your history, what got you here, and why you are an expert in this topic. Yeah, I, I, influence is something that I've been searching for, I think, my whole life. And then really, it's it's been a journey in many ways. I My, my kids, I tell them this is one of the number one skills you can develop in life, influence versus manipulation. And maybe maybe that that started, I've always wanted to help people. But I found that often I was I was helping people in very small ways. People would ask for some advice and I'd give them an answer or whatever. And that, that really doesn't make a significant difference in people. I, I lived in Sweden for a couple of years, lived in China for about a decade, came back to Canada and got a psych degree, an advanced psych degree, uh, became a psychologist. And, and in that journey, I realized that I wanted to help people in a far deeper way. And it, it all came down to how I was communicating, whether it was in a different language or, or whatever. And it didn't matter where people were from, what culture, that there were these the similarities, no matter where I was or who I was with, that were influential and actually did make a significant impact on somebody's life, which, which I believe a sale, a good sale is making an impact on somebody's life. That, that's my opinion. So yeah, I, I guess that would be a lot of the background. I mean, I'm an executive coach now. So I believe my job, my primary job is to influence people towards their own goals. That, that's what I see my job as being. So it very much fits into what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to sell people on their own goals and working towards their own goals <laughs> every day of the, of the week. Awesome. And so, so I guess to start this conversation, because I think it's it's pretty important is do you want to define how you see influence and how you see manipulation and give a little bit of context for both of those words? Cause that's what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. I, I think manipulation, manipulation looks different in almost every culture. Uh, there, there are little similarities, but it's, it's very different. So for example, I'm Canadian. We, 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 we like to think of ourselves as very polite and, and kind, but really we're very manipulative. <laughs> Canadians uh, do do it in a very passive aggressive way. So we're, we, we, we throw things out there, we throw hints out there. That's how Canadians often manipulate. I come from a manipulative family and a manipulative culture in many ways. And, and that's not to say that all Canadians are bad or good or anything like that. Some people are overtly manipulative and that they, they're really pushing and, and, and uh, aggressive in the way they communicate with people. What I found is that we don't have to manipulate people. And maybe I'll give you kind of a list of, of, of differences, for, for me at least, between manipulation and influence. For me, manipulation is all about me, or the, the focus is on me and getting what I want. With influence, the focus, the primary focus is on somebody else and helping them get what they want. Now, often when I'm talking to clients or talking to people about this, they go, well, if I'm helping somebody else, how does that help me? How do I close deals? How do I close sales in my yeah. business? And this is my opinion. Business is a long-term thing, project, event. And if we are in it for the long term, we want strong relationships. We want the kind of relationships that will give us referral to other businesses. We want networking partners that will help us with other businesses. And so if we make it a primarily about somebody else, it has the ability to serve our needs as long as we are intentional about it. So it's not just prime only about somebody else completely ignoring our needs or desires on any level. It's being, it's, it's being others focused first. So for example, with manipulation, I'm thinking what's good for me in this sale? How, how do I get this sale? That, that's the focus versus um, what, what, how does this sale help the other person? What needs is it fitting? Uh, with manipulation, it's fitting my goals uh, of, of, again, close the sale, close the deal. Whereas with, with influence, it would be something that fits 
somebody else's goals. So I've got to find out what their goals are. I've got to ask questions. I've got to get to know somebody. And obviously I'm talking about larger sales. I'm not talking about like iPhone cover sales, uh, right? If something costs 10 bucks, you, you don't get to know somebody's life story in order to, to, to find out what their, their emotional yeah. needs are in this purchase, right? But um, if, if with manipulation, if I fail, and this is a hallmark of manipulation, if I fail, I get upset. I'm getting angry, yeah. either to myself, yeah. angry at somebody else, because it was all about meeting my own goals. If, if yeah. I'm influencing, if I fail, that's okay, because there's this other person involved. And I can still learn and grow. I can develop my skill set. But again, it's not about me just accomplishing my one goal. It's about me improving to help other people. And of course, to also reach my own goal. With manipulation, it's all about pushing my agenda. <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about myself a lot. Yeah. My own story. Whereas with, with influence, I respectfully listen. In, I engagingly listen. Uh, with and one more difference, usually with manipulation, I know what's best. I know what's best for the other person. Cool. Whereas with influence, I'm open to the possibility that they might know something I don't know. And until I find that or discover that, there of course are going to be objections. There are going to be things that, that get in the way. And as soon as I get to know the person well enough, I get to know what their situation is well enough, I get to know their needs or their desires well enough, that's when I can make a bigger difference in, in somebody's life. Uh, that, that, would, that would be basically how I, I define manipulation versus influence. Yeah. No, I, I really like that idea. And I think especially when when you're looking at the big picture of it too, there's nothing bad about caring for yourself like yes. self-care in a general sense is very important but we're talking specifically in the relationship with you and a client where someone has asked you basically to help them that's what you are trying to do is is support them and so not to say that you know in your own life you have to in, in my mind what i'm hearing from you is not that you're in, in your own life you don't take that time to make sure your needs are met and and all of those pieces but for this relationship, if you take that perspective, then you're taking away from your own power to have that influence, to have an impact. Right. It's 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 focused, intentional time for a period of time. It's not that I'm giving my life to my client or my customer for forever. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on them for this period of time. It means I, I set aside some aspects of, of maybe what I want. I don't get everything that I need from this person. Uh, I don't have to share all of my story, whatever that is. Perfect. I, and we just had uh, Megan join us. Thanks for joining Megan. And she was, she's saying, I've never considered what I want my impact to be. And I mm -hmm. think that probably leads really nicely into to the next question I was happening to get, ask you was when you're starting with this, like, how do you determine what you want your influence to be? Because uh, wouldn't it be different for every person how they, how they seek that out? Yeah, I, I, I it can be different for different people. I believe yeah. that searching out what we want, whether it's in life, in business, comes down to, to some pretty straightforward questions that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, and and you, you will hear this a lot, especially in the personal development industry or, or industries focusing on helping businesses. You will find that it starts internally. We need to start with, why am I doing this? What, what is it that I want to accomplish in life? What do I want bigger than myself? So I'll give you an example of myself. When I was figuring out, and people talk about their why, I know this is overdone, yet we need to understand what's motivating us. That'll help us pass the hurdles. So for example, myself, I've always loved helping people. I love, I, I feel fantastic when I help people. It's a gift. There, there are times where I'm like, I wouldn't even be, I would do this for not being paid at all. I, lo I just love it. I have a great desire to impact others. So that's part of my why. Another part of my why in business is to make money, is to grow my business. And that has a twofold purpose. Again, it 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 grows me and it feels good. I, I can explore life. I can do things like that. But it also puts food on the table. It also does the basic things that, that I that I want. Uh, and, and really that's that's kind of my twofold influence with business. For me, family's always involved. No matter where I'm going, no matter what I'm thinking, family is a very large motivator for me. How does this impact my kids? I've got a 12 and 10 year old. I'm constantly thinking about them. So, so maybe those three reasons, how can I impact others? How can I make money to live the life I desire? And how do I, how do I help my family along on this journey? Those are things that influence me. But I would say for the average person, we need to go back to our values. What do I value? 
And why do I value that? Sometimes it's because I was taught that as, as a kid in some ways, or maybe it's a certain religious background, or, or maybe it's because I've, I've experienced some trauma or something, and I, I want to change that for myself or others. But figuring out what those reasons are and what our values are in that is, I believe, paramount. Once we have that, we understand our values, we understand why we're doing this, then we can start asking the what, what do we want? Uh, so, okay, I want to have influence. What does influence look like for me? Uh, do I want to be the, the, the person that's on, on everyone's lips that, that everyone knows? Or do I want to be kind of anonymous, but be influential with a small group of people in a really impactful way? Figuring out the, the what can come afterwards, and then we can kind of develop a plan for that. Does that make sense? You think I've answered that question? I, I think so. And, and Megan, feel free to add something if if that didn't kind of cover what you're talking about. I, I completely agree with you, Mark. I, you know, I've, I've done a lot of work with people, helping them figure out their values, helping them figure out their why. And, you know, with, with what you're talking about, I, I do really believe that is the first step is you have to have that, that clarity, that driving piece behind it. Or I, I also think it'd probably make it easier to slip into that manipulation piece when yes. you don't have a clear sense of why it's important to not manipulate or to be influential it's much easier to think, oh, well, I'm just, I need to do this for myself to survive for my family, for my kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so as, as we're going along here, because the topic was how to influence people, what would, what would you say are some of the other steps that people can take to either bring awareness to what they want to influence or actually how they take those steps themselves? Yeah, I would say that they're kind of like level one skills and then level two skills. They're, they're the okay. basic skills that, that we need to learn to be influential. And then there are skills that take it to a completely different level. Uh, so the, the number, the, the level one skills would be to practice curiosity rather than judgment. Just ask a few more questions of people on a consistent basis. Uh, ask, hey, what's going on right now? If, if you see somebody just reacting, simply saying, hey, what's, we're asking what's going on right now, instead of going, you're a jerk. The, 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 the curiosity versus judgment that gets us into a consistent place of asking questions and not assuming. Uh, that, that's a really, really good practice of people. Another level one skill would be compromise. Learning that in, in most great business deals, most great relationships, most great, you put fill in the blank, there, there needs to be, hey, what fits you? What fits me? Now let's figure out how this works together. I used to think compromise was like this dirty word where, where I've got to give up something of myself. And yet, I've found that the most fulfilling relationships, the most fulfilling business relationships I have are built on compromise of figuring out what works for us rather than just works for you or me. Um, another one would be, again, basic listening skills. Uh, that, that includes engagement. So people talk about active listening. I'm talking a little bit deeper than that. So really paying attention to people's body language. I found that if somebody is saying something to me, but I notice there's something off in their body language. It's saying there, there's something that, that's off here. There's something uncomfortable with this person. Maybe I'm saying something uncomfortable. I don't know what it is. So I can just stop and ask and say, hey, when I said this, I, I started seeing your knee bumping up and down. Like, what's going on here? I found that just noticing, paying attention to people goes deep very quickly. Often people say, oh, did I? I had no idea. And then they will answer my question by going, well, when you said this, this is something in my background. This is this is where I'm going in my head with that. And it just goes deeper so fast with, with people. Practicing, I'll give you two more level one uh, skills. Yes, one is practice remembering people's names. <laughs> that is paying attention to somebody in just a really significant way. If you're at a networking event or at a some kind of event with your colleagues or, or, or other people, business professionals, remembering people's names goes such a long way to, to influencing somebody. It builds trust faster than almost anything else. And then the other thing would be sincere compliments. If we get in the practice of asking, and I'll give you some examples of this. If we give in, get in the practice of giving sincere compliments, it goes so deep with people. Because again, we need to notice something deeper. It's, it's so much more than saying, hey, I like your outfit today. Th that's fine. There's nothing wrong with saying you like somebody's outfit. But if you, I'll give you an example of last week. So last week I, w I went through, I was at co-op, I'm going through the checkout. And I mean, you could tell that it was, it was, it was hot. It was a busy day. And the, the checkout person, the checkout individual was just 
fantastic at their job. She was engaging with people and you could see most people weren't even looking at her in the eye. And you go, this person is working, I don't know, eight hour shift. And she, she's putting all of her effort into this. So when I got to the end of the checkout, I said, hey, listen, so I called her by your name. It's a like name tags right there, right? I called her by your name and said, listen, you are incredible at engaging with people and really bringing a smile to people's face. How many times do you notice that you make a difference for somebody else's life? So I asked her a question. And by, by giving her that compliment and asking that question, her demeanor changed. And she went, wow, somebody is noticing these things that I do that most people don't notice. They've noticed my hair, they notice whatever. Somebody's noticing yeah. something deeper. When we can give a sincere compliment, that's significant uh, with, with people. Those are the level one skills. Now, do, should it go? Should we go with anywhere else before we go to the level two skills? Or, yeah, I, I mean, I just I'd reinforce all of those. I love what mm. you're saying, especially the last part. I I consider feedback an investment in relationship, and yeah. it doesn't have to be, you know, the the craziest biggest piece. But like you said, a sincere, observed piece, not just yeah. a visually observed, but a, a felt or a, a deeper experience of how it influenced you. Is, mm. is so powerful. I also want to put in, uh, Megan asked, what are some ways to switch your employee mindset to an entrepreneur mindset? And Whoa. when when I hear you talking, and, and I'm going to try to pull this to this conversation specifically, because that is a big, a big picture question. But I, what I'm wondering with this partially, is if you think about that piece of manipulation versus influence, and as an employee, you had someone who is telling you what your influence was and what you should influence. And as an entrepreneur, you now have a little bit more autonomy over that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you would you would recommend in that realm? Because I, I could see how that would be a, a challenge for people is instead of someone telling you and someone bringing an influence to you, you're now saying, I, I get the choice to have my own type of impact. Yeah, we could go so many different directions with I this. Know. Uh, it, it's such a good question. Yeah. Maybe where, where my mind goes first, is that an entrepreneur has to take full responsibility for all results in their business. I have to take full responsibility of my sex successes and my failures. And that feels great when I've got successes. It doesn't feel as great <laughs> when I've got a bunch of failures. But taking full responsibility means if I'm not getting what I want, I need to either learn to influence myself better. So maybe I'm procrastinating too much. Maybe I've got to get over certain things that I fear. So I've got to influence myself more or I have to influence others. Maybe people aren't willing to pay for my services and it's a fair price. You know your market. Uh, maybe you're working with certain contractors or, or, or you're partnering with certain people and you've got to realize, hey, why? I, I think I'm offering a lot of value. Why aren't people taking me up on this? Why aren't people wanting to engage with me? And so asking those questions of ourselves of, of how do I influence myself or others around me more or, or better in a, in, a, in a significant way, I think that that can be a really good question in that process of becoming somebody who works for themselves on some level. What, do you have anything to add? What are your thoughts? No, I, I like that idea because it, it becomes a piece of personal accountability. And, mm -hmm. you know, considering Megan's question, and I'm, I'm trying to put it very much in the context of this, mm -hmm. See, to, to me, it comes back again to that piece we talked about already is, is like that why and mm -hmm. the values because it, there's when you're in a role that once again maybe has assigned values that you're try trying to live by or has an assigned why for the company direction versus an individual direction, mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to almost get away with not having to do that work. And that work to me aligns with the accountability piece or the you know, that it's all under you as you're an entrepreneur. So yeah. I'd, I'd say those kind of all, they all come together. Like you said, it's a, it's a very big topic. Um, and I just want to make sure that we have time for, for both that, but also I would love to hear these level two pieces. And that might also help align this for people too, of, of what that looks like. Right. Can I piggyback on what you've said? Cause what you've said is Please. brilliant. Thing. We, we come back. So it comes back to this motivation or why. For every person in any role in life, whether you're an employee or an employer, or whether you're a solopreneur, whether you are a parent or a child or friend, whatever it is, in, in every type of role or relationship, we come up against hurdles. Hurdles are, are what prevent a lot of people from taking a next step forward. Entrepreneurship is full of hurdles, <laughs> full of hurdles every step <laughs> of the way. 
And yeah. what I found is that if we are not motivated enough, if we haven't influenced ourselves enough, we will shrink back from those hurdles instead of jumping over them or pushing through them or figuring out another way around them. And motivation is always emotional. 100% of the time, it's always emotional. Now, we are either motivated away from something because we're, we're terrified of it or we're, we've got some kind of emotional reaction to it. We're feeling overwhelmed or we can push forward if we've got a lot of hope in something. Think about people who have been influential in our own lives. And when we've taken action, maybe that we didn't even think was possible. And think about the emotions that we had in those moments. We, 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 we had confidence or we had hope or we, had, we were strongly motivated with other emotions. And I think that, again, exactly what you said, Leah. We need to understand what motivates us and then remind ourselves of those motivations in times where we need to take that next step, when we need to ask, what, what's the best choice here? Even should I become an entrepreneur or do I stay stay as an employee? That I mean, it's okay, right? Either way, it needs to fit us. Does, does that make sense? It, it totally makes sense. And hopefully again, not rabbit holing here, but you also <laughs> said an inf interesting piece about influencing yourself. Mm. And with the way you were speaking and just thinking of entrepreneurship and this kind of weird blend that we have of both, you know, your business as, as your creation that you care mm. about, mm. and then also your role within that, there's, there's also an influence for yourself for your business when you're saying influence yourself, right? That you're taking that, that extra step. And like I said, I, I think that feels a bit, a bit rabbit hole that we'd be, we'd be pulling off the main track. But in that, in that context of everything's about relationship, you have a relationship to your business mm -hmm. and you have to be kind with that influence as well. You have to be aware of what's serving, what's serving what. Yeah. Yeah. I agree completely, Leah. Uh, I, I want to wrap a hole with that too. I won't, but you're, <laughs> This is really useful. I mean, the, the, the thoughts that you've got there and the questions that you're asking, I agree. I, I, I think the same ways we have to ask ourselves those questions. We have to influence ourselves. So get to know ourselves well enough. People talk about self-awareness. Well, what's motivating me right now? And what could be motivating me? How do I need to switch here? How could I influence myself? What will help me get over this next obstacle? I thought those are great questions to ask. Oh, Leah, you froze on me. I'm not sure if Leah's coming back. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to continue with level two skills. And then as soon as Leah's back, uh, we, we can talk a little bit more. Uh, so again, I don't even know if I'm on, on right now, but I'm going to talk about levels two skills. The first one is a pleasing personality to develop a pleasing personality. And I've read this in a few books. It, what does that even mean? What does a pleasing personality mean? It means that we, we are, other people are drawn to us. Other people are drawn to our personality. So how often do we smile? How often do we engage with people? How often do we ask people questions? How often do we, do we connect well with somebody? Th those are really, really important questions to ask ourselves, the, the more pleasing a personality that we have, the more people engage with us, the more people want to spend time with us. Secondly, is active problem solving with others, active problem solving with others. So instead of telling people, well, you should do this, it's going, hey, well, have you thought about this? What, what are some advantages and disadvantages of this? And, and, and again, it, it's, it's a question and answer period where we're, we're growing with somebody. We're figuring out what fits them on so many levels. Uh, a third one is negotiating. So we I talked about compromise with level one skills. Compromise is sometimes just giving up something. Negotiating is saying, okay, how do I fit your needs? And how do I get most of what I want as well? Uh, that's not a wrong thing to think. That's not a wrong thing to, to act on. And so, so negotiating is just this deeper level skill that instead of just giving up some things, I, I give up some things that, that I, I, I'm okay with giving up and I, I keep some things that I'm not okay with giving up. It's not simply compromise, if that makes sense. Lastly, motivating others, utilizing their emotions and their goals. All the levels two skills that I'm talking about are very focused on just going that, that next step deeper. Yes, listening is great, but how well are we asking questions to, to get to know somebody's motivations, their goals, their desires, and then feeding that back to them and saying, hey, you said this, you said this is important to you. How does that fit in with 
with not buying what I'm offering or what it, with, with, with not taking this action. This works with addictions. This works with, with any area. It's, it's about influencing people. Uh, I go, maybe, maybe I'll finish off. I don't know how much time we've got here. I'm, I'm going to finish off with this before, before I take off. I, my, my daughter, I, we've been talking about going to France for years as a family. And my daughter told me one day, uh, dad, I'm not excited about going to France. I don't want to go to France. And so I put my my influence skills to, to the test. I didn't manipulate her. I said, you're going, young lady, or else. I'm, I didn't say, if you don't go, this is going to happen to you. I, I didn't force her into anything. I said, don't worry. You'll get used to the idea. Well, what I did was I engaged with her. And I asked her, what are your concerns? What, are, what do you want? What are, what are you scared of? What's, what's going on emotionally for you? And what I discovered was that my, my daughter did not want to go to France because primarily because she's a very family oriented person and she wouldn't see a lot of cousins or other family or other extended family members. And so we worked through that and I said, okay, so what would, what would, there are things that you do want to go to France for this, this is affecting you. You want to spend more time with family. What if, so think about negotiation here. What if we, we flew out some of our family members halfway through the year? What if, and I asked some questions, I said, how often do you see your cousins right now? And she was specifically referring to two cousins that we see probably a total of two or three days a year. We don't see them all very often now. I said, what if we flew them out and we saw them for two weeks? And then what if for Christmas, we actually came back and spent some really dedicated time with family? So we'd actually see more family when we were in France than, than not. And she she all of a sudden went, wow, yeah, I, I, would, I would love that kind of thing. Uh, and then lastly, she said, she said, dad, there would be no Callaway Park there. And I said, you know what? That's completely true. And France is no Callaway Park. She loves spending time with me. Uh, so her emotional engagement there was going, I, I'm not going to be spending time with my dad. So I said to her, you know what? You're, you're, it's absolutely true. There's no Callaway Park there. Let me show you something. And I, I Googled Disneyland Paris and, and just, just put up, put up the picture. And she said, what is that? And I said, that's a place called Disneyland. And she went, wow, it's so much bigger than Callaway Park. I said, yeah, it is. And I, I said, what, what kind of rides do you think you'd enjoy there? So again, I'm, I'm not manipulating. I'm asking questions that are, I know you connect emotionally with my daughter. Well, at the end of this conversation, she said, dad, when can we go to France? And at the start of the conversation, she didn't want to go anywhere near France. And this was not manipulation. I wasn't telling her what she's going to do. I wasn't using her emotions against her. I was saying, hey, how can we give you what you desire in this? And yet, without sacrificing what, what we desire on some level. It was, it was really interesting. Sorry, Leah, we missed you there for a few minutes. So I continued on the, on the level two skills yes. there. No, that's wonderful. I will catch it up. I am so sorry to everyone. I've been having tech issues. As you can see, this is my different studio today. So <laughs> thank you for continuing on, Mark. No worries at all. No worries at all. Um, are there any other questions that people have or... I'm not sure. I'm not exactly seeing anything clear. coming up on the comments. Um, no I do want to make sure you have a little bit of time because I know you mentioned that you have uh, a gift and an opportunity for people. So I want to make sure that you had a bit of time to talk about that as well. Yeah. So in meeting Leah, I, I've been so impressed with Leah, how she communicates, how she engages with people, how she's so fundamentally strong in how she helps people. And and I, I, I've been so excited to, to do this with you, Leah. You'd asked if, if I had anything that I could maybe give to people. And I, I thought, you know what? I've got a weekend event coming up. I have six spots left. This is a fairly small group event where we're, we're masterminding. The, 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 the key theme of the weekend is how do we connect with other entrepreneurs so that we can find how, how we help each other, how we network together. It's an online event. Uh, we've had a lot of success with this. Usually when it's live, we usually charge like three, 400 bucks uh, online. We've only been charging 50 bucks, but I'm, I'm willing to, to, I've got six spots left. I'd be willing to open those six spots to, to people if they're, if, if they want to come, if they're willing to commit to it, we want to make sure that the spots go to people who are willing to come and, and make sure that they're there and engaged. And, and that's amazing. I mean, it, I, I appreciate your kind words and, and very much the same, from my side because we had just a, a fantastic conversation and knowing where you were coming from, from a heart centered place and with, with the influence and intentions that you have, I, I just really enjoyed having you on. And, and the fact that you're able to give that as a gift, I really hope people jump on right away. 
uh, to get those spots. Uh, we're going to make sure that Mark's contact info is in the comments after this. And so if you uh, see that as soon as you want to, you can email him and say, hey, I saw you on the show. You know, can I get into that uh, the weekend event? What weekend is it again, Mark? It's the 24th and 25th of July. So not this coming weekend, it's the weekend after. Awesome. And yeah, what I'd suggest is if you're going to, if you want to, to be in on this, what I'd suggest is make sure you mention Leah's name somewhere and all thrive somewhere and then then ask for for more information i will engage with you and the, the first six people i'll engage with you uh, just make sure that it's a good fit for you and then then i'll let you into that group yeah and I'm, I'm guessing they can contact you as well if they have questions about what that weekend is and what it looks like i i'm wondering if megan might be curious because she was asking these questions and thank you for engaging with us megan um because you know what i really see one of the benefits of working with you is is that clarity and that clarity in relationships. So yeah, I just, I'm really excited for, for whoever takes that up. We, we spend a lot of time in that event on why, on why we're doing what we're doing, thinking through that process yeah. and then, and then helping each other out with it. And you know what, for, for Megan, she said, I'm assuming she's a, she's a, an employee right now. Uh, or she's talking about somebody else in her family, know that we actually have quite a few employees that come to these events because they're trying to figure out their way through this and the challenge of, of making that transition. So yeah, absolutely anyone is welcome. Yeah, well, and that's, you know, the hope of this show is to help everyone with their mindset. I know I have a mm -hmm. biggest audience as entrepreneurs, but certainly I think all of this is super relevant to employees as well. Mm. So I, I just, you know, we'll, we'll wrap this up. I just want to thank you so much, Mark. Uh, this, this has been phenomenal. I, I, I highly encourage everyone to re reach out and connect with Mark. We might have lost Leah again. Yeah, you know what? I, I love being here. Leah's truly a gifted person at what she does. I encourage you to reach out to her as well as I've been getting to know her. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me. My contact details, as Leah said, will be in the, in the uh, tagline or, or somewhere below in this. Uh, you guys, everyone enjoy the rest of your week. Make this a fantastic week for yourselves. We'll see you.